true. So that's why I try to record it. You know, so. All right. As I was saying, yesterday during lunch, uh, I put together a spreadsheet for you guys. While you were eating? Yeah, while I was eating. So. I, it's just what I do. So. All right. Here's the first part of the spreadsheet or the first example of the spreadsheet. Over here on the right hand side, you got your legend of what all the different colors mean and what all the different lines mean, okay? So, here's what I would like you to do. And I realize this is kind of an open-ended question and there's a lot of interpretation that involves, but this graph, considering the lines that are on it, what the lines look like, what they mean, this graph represents a situation that we have talked about on several occasions already so far this year. So, take a couple seconds, talk to the person next to you. What graph are we being, what motion are we being represented by this graph? Discuss, go. Wow, that is not, that is not, the, is not the motion <laughs> that I uh, was thinking of. All right. So, uh, in listening to you guys, in listening to you guys discuss, there are some things that there's some good discussion points, or actually, there's some correct discussion points, and then there are good discussion points that we can go up from there. All right. So, give me one thing that you interpreted from this graph, or one thing you could tell about the motion from this graph. Like I said, some of them are right. I, I heard you guys talking about some. Some are right. Some aren't. What's one thing that you can tell me about the motion based off of this graph? So you go ahead. Uh, weight, uh, air drag, and the last, no, just kidding, and, uh, and, uh, no, weight, air drag, and acceleration is constant. Good. Weight, air drag, and acceleration are constant. All right. Do we, let's stick with those. Do we want to build on those at all? There might be something that is a little bit more specific that might be able to help us analyze this motion a little more. Ever good. Uh, good. Let's discuss that in a second. Okay. Uh, it's actually it's actually hidden, so um, it's underneath one of the other lines. Yeah. So that's why you can't see it. Okay. Weights, air drag, and acceleration are constants. Let's talk about some more specifics. I'm thinking especially the specifics as it relates to acceleration. Mm. The acceleration value in this graph is what? Technically, it's not 9.81. It's negative, negative 9.81, right? So the acceleration of this object is being caused by what? Gravity, Gravity okay? Uh, let's talk about the velocity line, okay? What's happening to the velocity of this object? Hmm. Cindy said it's decreasing. It is not decreasing. It's actually increasing, but in which direction? The negative direction, right? These values keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger, but bigger and bigger and bigger negatively. Okay? Good there? So, what is this graph representing? What motion is this graph representing? Free fall, right? This is a graph of something that we dropped from rest, right, because the initial velocity was zero, it experiences an ex a constant acceleration of negative 9.81, and the velocity increases accordingly, okay? Good there? It's free fall that we talked about in this class so far, because what do you see about the air drag or the air resistance in this graph? It's zero. Right? It's constantly at that x-axis. It's constantly at zero. There is no air drag here. Right? Also, line in the middle, the weight. We introduced weight earlier in this unit. What do we define the weight of something as? 
Mass times gravity, more generically though, if we had to define weight, that's how we calculate weight. What is our definition of weight? How about we could change that effect to one other word? The force of gravity acting on an object. And we said that we calculate it by doing what? At M times G, right? The mass of the object times the acceleration of gravity. And we see here in this case that weight is constant as well, okay? So, Evan, let's examine. You're not the only one that noticed this, right? Evan asked about the orange line, net force. So I guess the darker orange or red, whatever, we wanna, whatever color we want to call that, okay? So, our definition of net force as we introduced it earlier was what? You said, go ahead. The sum of the forces, okay? So, there are two forces in this picture, right? What are the two forces that are represented in this graph? Weight, we just talked about that, that's the force of what? Gravity, right? And then the other force would be what? Acceleration isn't a force. Acceleration is what happens because of forces. Air drag is a force, right? But what's our value for air drag? Zero. So if we add weight plus air drag, right, it equals weight, right? So our net force line is actually where in this graph? It's underneath the weight line, okay? That's why you can't see it, because in this case, the net force is the weight, because there are no other forces in this graph, right? So, net force is constant, that leads to what? If net force is constant, what else has to be constant? Acceleration, because net force causes acceleration, and we see that that's to be the case here, okay? Good there. All right, this though is not real life, right? This isn't what happens out there in the real world. This can happen on the moon, right? But it can't happen here in, on Earth, right? So what I'm gonna do here is, oops, wrong button. Okay. All right, so up at the top corner of my spreadsheet, I added a couple of parameters to the spreadsheet. I can change the mass of the object, I can change the air drag coefficient, and I can change the initial velocity, okay? So let's do this first, okay? Let me change the initial velocity, and let's say the initial velocity is negative one meters per second, right? How would I give something an initial velocity of negative one meters per second? What did I do? Say again. Let's change. Devin said start start the graph when it's already accelerating. Let's change accelerating to what word? It's already velocity means that it's moving. It's already moving. Okay? How's this gonna change my graph? It's gonna shift it which way? Down. What's gonna shift down, Hannah? Which line on the graph is going to shift downward? The velocity line will shift down. What's not going to change? The acceleration won't change. And if the acceleration doesn't change, what else doesn't change? The net force. The air drag I can control because I just made it zero, right? Okay. So if I just hit enter, right, that changes my graph. So now it looks just like this, right? And just like we said. The only thing that changes is that we shift the velocity line down a little bit, right? It, this object is still doing what? It's still free falling. It's still physically doing what as it falls? Accelerating at the same rate, right? Nine point, negative 9.81, that stuff all stays the same. We just change where it started, okay? Again though, not like real life, all right? So let's change the initial velocity back to zero. Okay. And now let's make this a little more lifelike. So in the air drag box, okay, I'm going to add just a completely random value. Okay, I'm just picking this off the top of my head. It doesn't mean anything, I'm just plugging in a number. So let's go 0 0.01. Okay, we said just random, it doesn't mean anything. Okay. I'm gonna hit enter, and it's gonna change my graph 
to look. I know, the anticipation is killing you, I'm sure, right? Ready? Here it goes. Okay. All right. So, instead of wasting time having you guys talk to each other, let's talk about some differences. Okay? Tell me one thing that changed. Lots of things changed, but let's talk about one thing that you noticed that changed. So let's I start identifying our differences, that things that happened. Okay, let's go what? Okay, you can see net force. Mahan, what's happening to the net force in this problem? Mm. It is actually decreasing because it's getting closer to zero, right? Remember, this stuff is under the x-axis. So a, a, something that starts at a negative value, negative five, and gets negative four, negative three, negative two, that net force is decreasing. It's just decreasing in which way? Well, it's actually decreasing, but it's still in which direction? It's still downward, it's still in the negative direction, but it's decreasing in the negative direction, okay? One of those graphs, actually three of those graphs, actually, or two of those other graphs mirror the net force, right? What else mirror, has to mirror the net force? Acceleration, net force causes acceleration. So if the net force is decreasing, guess what else is decreasing? The acceleration is decreasing, right? Okay. That happens because what did I change? The air resistance, the air drag, right? And we see here what's happening to the air drag in this, pro in this graph. It is increasing. It started how? At zero, but it is getting bigger and bigger and bigger in which direction? The positive, because if something is falling downward, which way is air drag gonna push on it? Upward, right? So if we have, but one thing didn't change on this graph. Mm, velocity actually does change. It's a subtle change, but it does. What didn't change though? The weight. The fact that there's air resistance now does not change the fact that gravity is still acting on this object. But if we have a constant weight in the negative direction, pointing downward, right? And then we have an increasing air drag in the positive direction, right? Down plus up, right? That means the total keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Does that make sense? The whole net force idea and stuff like that, okay? Now, Devin, I said even though it's little, it's not quite as uh, obvious here, the velocity actually is changing a little bit because it is not a constant acceleration. Remember, slope on a velocity graph tells us acceleration. The original graph, the velocity line was completely straight because the acceleration was completely straight. Here, that's not gonna be the case. The slope is not constant. Let them, let's make this a little more dramatic, okay? Oh, wrong button again. Say again? Because acceleration depends on two things, right? Acceleration also depends on the what? And mass, right? So uh, this, I'll show you in a second, because air drag is not a direct relationship with, it's, it's, it's a, air drag is actually a quadratic relationship, that's why it's curved, right? And that's why it's changing a little bit more, so, okay? All right. Here's what I'm gonna do next, okay? I'm gonna change my air drag from 0 0.01 to 0 0.1. Again, totally random, just making numbers up, okay? So I'm increasing the effect of air resistance on this object, right? Okay, a higher air drag means more air resistance, okay? Air drag is a force. So it's going to be in newtons, all right? I probably should put that on my spreadsheet, but I didn't, so. All right, okay? One thing still hasn't changed, right? The weight of the object, right? The force of gravity remains constant as this object is being pulled downwards towards Earth, but lots of other changes, okay? So net force 
air drag and acceleration are all seeing that same pattern, just more dramatic. Yes? Okay. But now we can see, better observe, the changes in the velocity. What is happening to our velocity in this graph? Mm. It's not slowing down. It still starts where? At, ah, it's speeding up. It's speeding up the entire time. It's just speeding up by a lower amount each time. Or it's experiencing less what? That's a that's a that's a more that's like kind of a more regular everyday person way of saying is experiencing what? Speeding up less is no. Speeding up less and slowing down are two different things. Speeding up less, if we use a fancy physics okay. word, it's, mm, let's not go with decelerating, okay? Because decelerating implies that it's doing what? Is it slowing down? It's not. It's still speeding up, it's just not speeding up as much. It is experiencing, no, definitely not density. <laughs> Less acceleration, all right? As we can see from this gray line, right? What's happening to the acceleration line as we go along? It gets higher and higher and higher, or sorry, it's getting higher and higher and higher, but that's actually getting closer and closer and closer to what? Zero, okay? Uh, even though you guys can't see it, I'm going to change my air drag from 0 0.1 to 0 0.25. If you're watching the recording, you can see it, but you guys can't see it in class because I'm zoomed in. Okay? All right, 0 0.25, more air resistance. Ready? Here we go. Okay. Same overall effect, just a little bit more dramatic. Right? Air drag, 0 0.35. All right, do we see the trend that's happening here? Okay, what's continuously happening to the acceleration value? It's getting, it's getting slower. It's getting slower, it's getting closer. The acceleration keeps approaching what? Zero, All right? What's happening to the velocity value? Use it. It's becoming closer and closer and closer to being constant. Right? Does that make sense? Is this object after one, this is one second, by the way. Yeah, one second right there, okay. Is this object with its acceleration almost zero moving after one second? Yes. No, no, not slightly. It's actually moving faster than it ever has the rest of the graph. But the change is less and less and less. It keeps getting closer and closer and closer to being a constant velocity, right? Because what have we kept increasing this entire time? The air resistance the upward force, right? If upward force gets closer and closer and closer to downward force, the net force, the red line, keeps getting closer to what? Zero. And net force of zero means what? Let's see if we make this jump. Net force of zero means? Well, that's what this application is terminal velocity more generally net force of zero means no acceleration not no movement no acceleration okay does that make sense let me see if i can get it i'll change the air drag coefficient again okay all right there we go right eventually the net force becomes what zero and the acceleration then also becomes zero right the weight is still constant but what has happened to the air drag it is increased but how is it increasing anymore 
No, it's constant as well. Guess what value the air drag is constant at? Negative oh, 5, which just so happens, or it's not negative 5. Air drag is constant at 5, but the weight is constant at not 5, negative 5. So if we add 5 and negative 5, what do we get? Zero. zero, and that means the net force is zero, right? Is this object moving quickly? Yes. yes. Is it speeding up? No. no. All right. Does that make sense? This, in the, in the real world, is Devin, what we call what? Terminal velocity, OK? As objects fall through the air, like, let's say, this skydiving guy, right? As they fall through the air, they are under the influence of gravity the entire time, but they are not under the influence only of gravity, right? They also have to encounter air resistance. Here on Earth, we can't get rid of it, right? So, air resistance, though, depends on movement, okay? At the beginning of our graph, the air drag value starts where? Starts at zero. Why? Because the object isn't moving yet. Objects only encounter air drag when they start moving into the air. As they move faster and faster and faster, what happens to the value for the air drag? It increases. As you, it's, as you run more and more faster and faster, you hit more air particles, right? That's what air drag comes from, you physically running into the air. That produces that force that is in the opposite direction of whichever way you're moving. For the case of things falling through the air, if they're moving downward, air resistance will be upward because it's opposite the direction that they're moving. Good, right? That reduces the net force. The net force causes an object to do what? Accelerate. Accelerate. The object will continue to go faster, but it won't speed up as much as it did before. Right? It still goes faster and faster and faster as shown by this velocity line. Right? Because it keeps getting farther and farther away from zero, more and more negative. Right? But it's not increasing as much. Right? We take away air drag and the velocity just increases. Right? Continuously. Because the net force doesn't get any smaller because it's just gravity. Right? But, right, if we add that air drag, the velocity will continue to increase, just not as much as it did before. Until eventually, air drag and weight, or the force of gravity acting on that object, balance each other out. If one force down and one force up balance each other, what happens? It cancels out, and then the object will be in equilibrium or not accelerate, right? The object will not accelerate anymore. If something is not accelerating, what does it do? Whatever it was doing before, right? At the moment that it became zero net force. And if it's doing that, what's that idea? We introduced that idea the very first day of this unit. That's inertia, right? Now it just keeps doing whatever it's doing because there's no force to change it and make it do something different. Yeah? Right? All right. So if we go back to this guy skydiving here, right? Two forces that are acting on him, a weight force and a resistance force, which is an air drag or an air resistance force, right? So at the beginning, when he first jumps out of this helicopter, right? They made, it, they made it jumping out of a stationary helicopter so we don't have to worry about the horizontal part, right? Okay. 
Like when you're in an airplane, you have to worry about horizontal and vertical, but here he just is doing vertical, right? What's the net force that's acting on him at the moment that he steps out of the plane? 1,000, in which direction? Yeah. Downward, right? So here, or not. A marker, what is this? 1995. Actually, when I first started teaching at Westlake High School, the room I was in had a chalkboard, like an actual uh, movement. So, there we go. All right, so here, right, with these two, the net force is a thousand, right? We probably should call it negative a thousand, right? Because it goes in the downward direction. Okay. And we could then figure out, right? So his acceleration at that point in time is going to be 9.81. Let's call it around 10 because that makes our lives a little easier, right? Math is a little easier, okay? Yes? It, it, they told you in the problem that they, this guy's weight is, or weight, this guy's mass is 100. You, you guys actually have the description of it in the top left-hand corner. Right? So 100 kilograms is about 220 pounds. Yeah, well, easy. Maybe he's just, maybe he's got a thyroid problem. I mean, maybe his pituitary, maybe his pituitary gland is over, he's overactive, you know. So maybe he just likes Twinkies. I mean, there's that too, you know. That's true. He might have a really good body mass index, right? Or maybe he's just really muscular, so his his BMI is all messed up. Like you know, you have people like people that are that are real muscular. When they when they get their BMI, they come out as they come out as obese because they're the because of their height weight ratio. Even though there's lots of other things that you know. So anyway, regardless, okay. Uh, if you want to make it, you know what? Let's if you read if you read the problem there, um, his name is actually Bronco. So now if you put a name on it, it makes it harder to call him fatty at that probably, Bronco. you know, Bronco. So, although Bronco is kind of a good name to the Bronco is like a big guy, you know. Gus, a strong guy, totally, so. All right, next section, letter B, okay? What's the net force acting on Bronco in letter B? Negative, Negative 600, right? It's still in the downward direction, but now that he's started moving, he has experienced air resistance. So now there's an upward force, right? Negative 600 newtons divided by 100 kilograms now means that his acceleration is what? Negative six. Okay, sorry. I just, just knew it. Is that better? No, I like the other one more. Question. Is he slowing down? No. No. That's the third. He's just speeding up less. He has gotten faster from A to B, even though his acceleration has gone down. He's just not getting as fast as quickly. Yes? What's the net force acting on him in letter C? Zero. And if his net force is zero, what's his acceleration? Zero. Is he stopped? No, he's just what? Not accelerating. How fast is he going? In relation to the other pictures. He's going faster than at any other time because he's been accelerating the whole time yeah. he has stopped accelerating but that doesn't mean he has stopped moving right good there yeah. all right this is terminal velocity he has reached a constant velocity because gravity and the air resistance force have balanced each other out okay Terminal velocity for a human being, depending on 
body shape and stuff like that is about 120 miles per hour, all right? So if you jump out of a plane, you're falling, uh, you can change that a little bit, like, you know, if you give yourself like a torpedo shape or something like that, if you change your air resistance, you can change what your terminal velocity is. But what doesn't change is that you will eventually reach a point where the air resistance upward balances the gravity downward and you don't accelerate anymore, right? But if nothing changes, what's going to continue to happen? You're going to continue to move, right? Hmm? What did you say? No. You're not going to continue to move any faster. If nothing changes, right, if nothing changes, you just keep going, right? Which is dangerous for you because eventually you're going to hit what? The ground, right? So in a question related to the question that you had last night on your, or, uh, on your quiz, right? This object is moving in the downward direction. We need to slow it down. What has to be true about our two forces here? Bottom has to be, bottom has to be less, top has to be more. In this case, if we're moving downward, but we gotta slow down, top's gotta be bigger than bottom, right? Or up's gotta be bigger than down. So what do you do to increase the upward force? Make a bigger area, right? You give yourself more air resistance. We do that, right, with a parachute, okay? So now we've increased the upward force. What's the net force here? Positive 200. And that means now the acceleration is what? Has he started moving back upward? He's still going downward. His velocity is still negative, but his acceleration is positive. If we have acceleration in a different direction than velocity, physically what happens? We slow down, right? Positive acceleration doesn't mean which way you're going. That means what's happening to your velocity, right? Your velocity is becoming more positive. But if it's already really negative, you got a long way to go before you get there, right? Positive velocity means you're moving upward. Positive acceleration just means you're slowing down while moving downward, okay? Then the parachute gets bigger and bigger and bigger, right? As we increase the surface area, air drag increases. What's the net force here? Positive 1,000. And that means his acceleration is positive 10, caused by gravity. That was a question, sorry. Caused by air resistance. Numerically, it's the same as gravity, but gravity pulls things which way? Down, this is up, right? What's happening to his velocity in the green circle? Mm. Getting smaller, right? Getting closer to zero. He's still moving which way? Downward with a positive acceleration Negative velocity, positive acceleration, that means we slow down, right? Finally, finally, sorry, as he slows down, what happens to the air resistance that he experiences? It decreases. Remember, air resistance is how many molecules you run into, right? If you're going slower, you run into less air. You run into less air, you have less air resistance. So air resistance has increased from here to here, but from then here to here, what has happened to our air resistance? It has gone down. What's net force in this last picture? Zero. 
and that means his acceleration is zero. What do we call that? That's terminal velocity. Again, is it the same terminal velocity as before? No, because guy Bronco with parachute open is a different shape and has a different air resistance than Bronco with no parachutes, right? Those two pictures at the bottom, right? Picture C and picture F are both terminal velocity, but they're different terminal velocities because they're different objects, okay? So to wrap this up, Terminal velocity is a specific example of a topic that we'll talk more about tomorrow, and, we, and people have thrown it out a little bit here, is a topic of equilibrium, okay? By definition, it says, in general, and this is the second sheet I gave you today, the one that has the two sheets stapled together, okay? In general, objects with zero acceleration are said to be in equilibrium. Zero acceleration means what else has to be true? No net force. No net force. Net force equals zero. If we drew a free body diagram, free body diagram, right? Arrows to show forces. If we drew, showed a free body diagram of you sitting in this classroom right now, and you... reaching terminal velocity before you open your parachute, right? Actually, either after you open your parachute. What would those free body diagrams look like? The two arrows, they would look exactly the same. There'd be one arrow down, right? That's coming from what? That acts on you whether you're sitting in this classroom or whether you're jumping out of an airplane, right? And then there's an upwards force. In this classroom, what's providing that upwards force? The chair, right, means we call it a what? Do you remember from the other day? We call it a, starts with an N. You don't know it, all right? It is a normal force, okay, okay. Here, it's air resistance. But in both cases, what has to be true about the downward force and the upward force? They have to cancel because as you sit here motionless in this classroom or as you sit here at terminal velocity after you jump out of an airplane, your acceleration in both cases is what? Zero. And therefore, your net force has to be zero. And that is the gist of equilibrium. Okay? Good there? All right. Tomorrow, we'll pick it up from there. Tonight, there are a couple problems on the homework that deal with terminal velocity and equilibrium specifically. I think it's like three or four. Yeah, it's three, okay? Uh, there is a couple pages from your book, IBPCC, that's I, your IB Physics Course Companion, that's the paperback one, okay? Uh, there's a page there that tells about air resistance and terminal fluid resistance and terminal speed. Then there's a couple problems from the Apple book about terminal velocity, okay? Tomorrow, we'll do some more specific examples of equilibrium that don't involve air resistance, and uh, we'll go from there, all right?